What's up guys, it's Techno Viking 23 coming to you today with a little bit of commentary, unfortunately, about Destiny. And I've been trying to stay away from Destiny lately, as a lot of you guys know. I did delete the game off my PlayStation 4, I have not been playing Destiny anymore. Uh, just tired of the game um, and all its you know BS that we constantly get from Bungie and Activision, and I've just been enjoying playing other games since with um, the way my work schedule is right now. I just don't really have a lot of time to play games, so when I do play games, I want to play games that I enjoy and have fun with. But... I did promise to keep you guys informed if Bungie was doing anything stupid with this game, and this week we got a lot of <laughs> a lot of fun stuff to talk about, what I'm calling uh, Bungie's Blunders. I think we ought to just do a series called this, because it seems like every week there's just something else with Destiny um, that Bungie does that's really hilarious. Uh, you know, there was a lot of nonsense about the refer a friend thing last month. Um, I'm not really going to get into that too much. Uh, I just wanted to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about the weekly update. I'm going to talk about Sparrow Racing a little bit, and I also want to talk about how Bungie lied yet again. And we'll get into that at the end of the video. I'm saving that for last. Uh, first, just want to talk a little bit about Sparrow Racing, uh, which, if you were watching the Destiny YouTube community, is apparently the greatest thing since sliced bread, and is apparently the only thing that Destiny needs to be an amazing game. Um, they've buried a lot of other issues under the rug by just covering Sparrow Racing, which is kind of funny. Uh, I did actually play a few races on a friend's console because I wanted to be able to talk about it and have, you know, having played it because you don't want to talk about something if you haven't experienced it before because then you're an idiot. But I did run a few races on a friend's console just to see what it was like. And I have to admit it is kind of fun at first, but uh, it gets quickly very, very boring very quickly, kind of like the rest of this game and kind of like every update that's come out since Taking King. Uh, the biggest problem with Sparrow Racing I have is that we have been asking for this since the game came out. A lot of people have been clamoring for Sparrow Racing since the game launched, and Bungie has finally brought it into the game a year and three months later. And of course, they've surrounded it with all these microtransactions. Uh, you can buy a $10 Sparrow Racing book to track your statistics and get extra challenges for exclusive loot and rewards. Uh, so now, once again, exclusive loot and rewards are behind paying for something, and tracking your stats in the racing mode are behind paying for something. Pretty hilarious. I'm not going to get into that too much. You guys know how I feel about the microtransactions and how they're only eventually going to lead to more problems with this game. Um, the spare racing itself is kind of, again, just like the rest of the game, it's really RNG. I don't see how anyone could claim there's skill involved with the sparrow racing. It's a complete crapshoot when you get out there. Uh, the sparrows... You know, they don't handle very well. They're not very good for racing material. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you can hit, like, a little tiny pebble on the racetrack, and it causes you to fly off in 17 different directions. Um, the loot is still pretty much RNG. It can, it, I didn't see it as being all that fair, because you can win the race by 30 seconds, and the guy who DNFs, who just sits there AFK the entire time, can get, like, a, a 310 level legendary, while you get a crappy blue racing chest piece that has no light level whatsoever. So... Rewards are still a problem. Um, you know, I just <laughs> just think it's funny how everybody thinks the Sparrow Racing mode is so great and is going to save the game. And the biggest problem, again, is there's only two tracks. They, You know, this is something people have been waiting for for a year, over a year, and they bring it out, and there's only two tracks that you can you'll get those, you can run those several times in about 10 minutes. And it's like, that's it? You know, really? That's all you put into this mode? That's all the content you put into this? This is what supposedly all those microtransactions have been paying for? Uh, it just makes me laugh. And then Bungie has in their weekly update the gall to say, oh, we want your feedback. We want you guys to tell us how Sparrow Racing is and if you like Sparrow Racing. Well, guess what, guys? They've been asking for Sparrow Racing for over a year. You already have the feedback. You don't have to get the feedback. You know people want this in the game. So why do you put it out and do a half-assed job of it and only put two tracks and, and you know... Anyways, I'm going to move on from that. But if you're watching Destiny YouTubers, Destiny community, all you're hear about is how great Sparrow Racing is. And I, th I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's about maybe 20, 30 minutes worth of content that will you'll quickly get bored of, um, you know, if you're like me. Uh, moving on uh, to the update, Irk uh, actually did a little bit of the weekly update this week for Deej. And they were kind of addressing some of the complaints and things. People are talking about how there's just like nothing going on with the game. And there was an article that came out that Destiny is not doing any DLC in 2016. And people were all mad about that. And, of course, Irk had to come out and squash all that and say, oh, we're, we have all these big plans for 2016. We're going to be putting out all this awesome content, blah, blah, blah. And he said there's going to be another Festival of, the, Festival of the Lost type event coming up soon in 2016, which that sounds really exciting because Festival of the Lost was, yeah, that was really a lot of fun. <laughs> Amazing content that they're putting in the game for free. Um, 
Moving on, I wanted to talk about one quote that he mentioned in that article, though, because he's everybody's now excited. All the Destiny YouTubers are like, oh, there's tons of content coming in 2016 now. It's going to be so awesome. He said it's going to be bigger than anything we've seen since Taken King came out. If you read into that quote a little bit, you, you can kind of be skeptical because since Taken King has come out, what have we seen so far? We've seen Festival of the Lost and Sparrow Racing, which are both pretty lackluster in terms of actual free content. So... If it's going to be bigger than that, oh man, I just, that's so exciting. I don't see why people are, you know, why would anybody be skeptical of that? <laughs> but you got to kind of read into these things when we're dealing with Bungie, because Bungie, for the most part, are a bunch of lying assholes, and that's what I'm going to get into now. Um, as you guys know, they did the big major weapon patch, and everyone was all excited for auto rifles when the patch notes came out in November. They gave us a preview, and I'm not going to get super into this, and... Because I, I don't want to waste your guys' time with all these numbers and stuff. There's other videos out there you can go find for that. But they mentioned, you know, if, just an example with auto rifles, they're going to buff them by 7% for certain class of auto rifles. So everyone was all excited. The auto rifles are getting buffed. They're going to be good again. Um, pulse rifles have been dominating PvP for a long time. And everybody just wanted to be able to use some of their favorite auto rifles. So the patch drops, and people notice almost immediately that auto rifles are not doing any difference in damage. They're doing the same damage they were before. So digging a little deeper, Bungie went in and like stealth ninja the patch notes and basically the auto rifle buff, instead of 7%, it was 0.7%. And people quickly caught on to this. And the other thing too is with the Sparrow Racing coming out at the same time, this is almost like a strategic thing on Bungie's part. The Sparrow Racing came out about the same time as the patch. So a lot of people were focused on the Sparrow Racing. A lot of the big Destiny YouTubers were focused on the Sparrow Racing. Really this auto rifle kind of buff nerf thing sort of got swept under the rug and not too many people noticed it. But so basically they did not buff auto rifles whatsoever. Um, the amount that they were buffed doesn't even make a difference in damage. And then what happened was Bungie came out and said, oh, we made a typo in those patch notes in November. We told you guys this was 7%. It was actually only supposed to be 0 0.7. And thankfully a lot of the community is calling them out on their bullshit because we're sitting here like, really, you made that big of an error in a typo? And you didn't notice it for an entire month. I mean, who is running your company? What who is running your PR department? What kind of people in terms of intelligence are working at Bungie who miss something this big? Because let me tell you, there's a pretty big difference between a seven percent and a 0.7 percent buff to auto rifle damage. A 0.7 percent isn't even noticeable. You're not even gonna get like an extra point of damage. It's just it's a complete waste of time. It's completely pointless. And for them to try to tell us that this is what we originally meant, we meant for auto rivals to only be buffed to 0.4% or 0.7%, you're lying. You're full of crap. Because why would you do that? Why would you waste time with that kind of a buff? It's not even a buff. It's not going to make any difference. So yet again, Bungie has lied and tried to cover it up and just tried to, oh, we made a typo, you know. And it just amazes me. People still defend this company. Look at, look at the track record again. That's what I keep telling you guys. Look at the track record. Since Taken King came out, Oh, there's going to be awesome loot drops with Iron Banner. The first time Iron Banner came out after Taken King. What happened? The, uh, the loot drops were, were bugged. They were broken. And Bungie, Deej came out and said, Hey, everything's working as intended, guys. It's supposed to, the way it's supposed to be. And then after the fact, after the event, it was all of a sudden, it was, Oh, yeah, Iron Banner drops were bugged, and we're going to be fixing that for the next Iron Banner. Which, of course, they did. The last Iron Banner did drop fairly decent amounts of uh, legendary gear, but it doesn't change the fact Bungie lied out their ass the first time. They've lied about the smart loot in the Taken King, as many people will tell you who get the same loot drops over and over and over again. The terrible raid loot. They've lied about content they cut out of the game. They don't have any transparency. There's no communication from this company that you keep giving your money to. There's no transparency. There's no honesty. There's no accountability. So again, I ask, <clears throat> how does anyone continue to support Bungie and Activision with this title? Um, I'm not going to call it a franchise yet because obviously it hasn't. we haven't seen any more games with it. And I seriously don't see this game having the staying power of a franchise unless somehow their army of brainwashed 13-year-olds can propel them for the next 10 years. I don't know. Anyways, guys, I think it's ridiculous. I think Bungie needs to just come out and say, hey, we fucked up. We screwed up this auto rifle update. We're going to change it. We're going to go back in and patch it and give you the 7% we told you, were, told you we were going to in the first place. Because trying to make it sound like we only wanted to buff auto rifles less than 1% just sounds ridiculous. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. I'd love to hear your thoughts 
on this latest stuff from Bungie. And again, I don't really plan on doing too much Destiny coverage, but a lot of people were asking me to weigh in on this topic that happened this week since so many of the larger YouTubers are ignoring it. And that's really the biggest problem with the Destiny community in general is all these huge Destiny YouTubers who have these big sub counts, you know, 500, 500k plus subs who could make the most difference with this game just continue to stay silent on all, all of these problems. So that should tell you all you need to know. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you again next time.